I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about if your partner has an abuse history. Okay, so this happens a lot more often than you may realize, yes. and it is a very taboo subject, but it's important to understand it because if you've had a partner that has a trauma history, it's going to have a huge impact on them. Margaret has tremendous experience when it comes to trauma. It was one of her specialties over the many thousands of the years, years yes. that she's been <laughs> in the field. And I highly recommend you do a coaching with Margaret if you're a partner or you have had a trauma history. And you can get a coaching with her on my website, AskCraig.net, and just click on Margaret on the top. Of course, click on uh, Schedule Coaching with Me if you want to do one with me as well. Uh, Margaret and I have talked about trauma many, many, many times many, 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 over many the times. years. Yeah. And we're teaching a lot to Coach Vicky about that as well. Yes. <clears throat> so what do we have today, Margaret? Okay, what I want to say is it's unfortunately likely or somewhat likely that you could end up with a partner who has had a trauma history. Um, trauma comes in all flavors, but particularly I want to address sexual trauma history. Mm -hmm. um, it has a profound effect on people and it will come up in an intimate relationship because it has sort of confused you around closeness if it was unwanted contact and of course if you were a child and the person was an adult it was unwanted contact Yes, um, and it can make things very very difficult in a relationship um, and I just want to say a few things about how to handle it when that happens because people clearly don't know how to handle it and I hear quite a bit about that. Yeah. Okay. And but it can make you feel uncomfortable. Absolutely. To hear a partner open up absolutely. about these things. You know? Okay, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, some estimates say 20% of Americans and probably everyone else in the world has some history of unwanted sexual contact prior to age 18. Okay, it shouldn't happen, but the unfortunate reality is that it does. It can be absolutely anybody. It can be a parent, a parent's boyfriend or girlfriend, an aunt or uncle, the famous older cousin. Um, and that the joke is people will say that the famous older cousin because there are so many stories around about older male cousins wanting to go after younger, cute female cousins. Okay, my hairdresser, who is something of a philosopher, said to me one day, and there's always the cousin who wants to get into your pants. Okay, no, okay, it happens a lot. Yes, it does, unfortunately. So it can be really anybody at all. Um, the cousin, a step sibling, the babysitter, sibling, the babysitter. Um, can happen even if you just go to a sleepover one night. Absolutely, uh, your your friend's sibling. Yep, um, and the neighbor down the street. Um, who may have noticed that a child is looking kind of lonely or sad and befriended them. And that's the worst kind of abuse. The babysitter is on my list. Yes, indeed. Um, it can be someone from school or an athletic team, a friend's older, older sibling. The possibilities are endless. The strangest one I ever heard was a case where it appeared that a child was being sexually abused because she had all the symptoms. And she kept trying to say... Um, that someone was hurting her. But when everybody went through, everybody in the family, everybody who came into the house, nobody thought of the bug killer guy who came in once a month, and he was the culprit. Oh, my gosh. That's the weirdest one I think I ever heard. Yeah, I've never um, heard of something like that, Margaret. Yeah. I had another one where it was, and it was a little kid, and she had been sexually abused, and everybody knew it, and she had been treated for it. But she kept getting urinary tract infections. And again, nobody could figure out what was going on. Nobody was getting into the house. Finally, we found out that the older cousin, it was a basement apartment, the older cousin would jump in her window at night. 
she finally was able to divulge who had done this to her. So it can happen in all sorts of strange ways, okay? Yep. Yep. Um, but the results are always devastating. Um, and victims may be threatened, made to feel guilty, or bribed. Children often blame themselves for the abuse, okay? Um, and that's most unfortunate. But sometimes they've been threatened. If you ever tell I did this to you, I'll you know, hurt your mother, yep. hurt your dog, take back your Christmas presents, all kinds of, or I'll give you $2. You know, so it can be either a threat or a bribe. Sometimes a partner will mention the abuse sort of in passing to you um, during a conversation. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, and you don't understand you don't know the what impact do. of what that really means. And you don't, yeah. not only that, but you don't know what to do. Um, and the partner in, in saying that will say, you know, I, I have a history of all that, will say, but I don't want to remember it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to deal with it. The partner is often left having no idea how to respond. What do you say? All right? Most of us have been taught that it's not polite to pry. And that's what people will say to me. Well, I didn't want to pry. No, you didn't. I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to pry and ask a lot of questions. So what can you do or what should you do when they are trying to tell you something, at least sort of, you know? Um, your first task is to believe them. It is very rare that people bring up this ugly, ugly subject because it's a fiction. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, believe them. And nod, do whatever you have to do to acknowledge that you heard what they said and you believe them. Mm -hmm. um, and here are some things you can say. I'm so sorry that happened to you. If you would like to talk about it, I'm here to listen. And what you're conveying to them is that this is not too awful to talk about. And I'm willing to listen to your story. Okay? Because they don't yeah. want to lay it on you. Yeah. That's part of it. And not only that, I'm sure they feel ashamed. Sure. It's right? always embarrassing. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I didn't tell you this yet, um, but I had a call this week where the guy told me uh, he was prostituted by his aunt and uncle at three and four years old. Oh, dear God. It happens. And, yeah. you know, I said, you know, because he, he said he had abuse. I said, is that something you want to tell me about? And he told Good. me. Yeah, he did want to tell you, yeah. and you, you did exactly that. You yeah. didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. Wow. And there are some people who find that hard to believe. It's interesting. I heard that story many times when I worked in the prison. Yeah. Okay? That It does happen, unfortunately. Yeah. I worked with a client for years um, who had been prostituted by her father at truck stops. Okay? It does happen. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you brought him some comfort just by listening. Yeah. Um, and there's a magic phrase that I learned years ago. Whenever you're ready to talk about it, I will be here to listen. The magic is in whenever you are ready, because it sort of suggests that at some point you will be ready. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I will be ready to listen. Um, you want to convey that you believe them and that you can handle the subject without fainting or dying. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to faint. Nobody is going to die. And there's nothing too horrible to talk about. All yep. right. Um, even when survivors want to talk about it, they know it's an ugly and difficult subject and they don't want to lay it on you and burden you with it as well. I've had clients come in to see me to say, well, you know, I was in therapy several times before and I would ask something about, you know, well, how did that go and so forth and so on. And I've had a couple of people tell me, well, I have a sexual abuse history, but this person didn't look like they could handle it. So it's very, very important to, to let people know that you can handle it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and just don't freak out about whatever yeah, they say. Yeah, don't freak out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was first in the social work business, I, what I learned to do was keep a straight face and act like I had heard all this 5,000 times before. Mm -hmm. And then I would drive around the corner after the home visit and scream. <laughs> okay? Um, they had cars back then? They did. Uh, that was when the, the horse was sick and we had to use the car. The other thing you can say, there are a number of other things you can say, but here's another one. Um, you can respond with, I don't want you to be alone with all this. We can think about it together if you like or whenever you like. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's the old concept that my favorite, one of my favorite old Greeks said, that if you're in a, a love relationship, whether it's a friend or a partner, um, the relationship should double the joy and divide the grief. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying, I don't want you to be alone with it, 
you're offering to share just a little bit of the burden, okay? Um, in the beginning, the goal is simply to get the story. You don't have to find out how they feel about it all, just get the story and help them begin to establish a story, a narrative, mm -hmm. okay? You can gently ask some questions so that you understand what the person is saying, just so you, just so you understand what they're telling you. Don't try to fix it, cheer them up, make them feel better. Don't do any of that. Just listening is the thing that will be most helpful to them. Mm -hmm. um, you can comment on their bravery for having lived through it and for having been open and vulnerable enough to tell you, because that does indeed take real courage, okay? Um, and again, they may have been threatened with dire consequences if they ever tell. And I don't know if I've shared this before, but when I worked in the prison, of course, there were many men there who had some really ugly sexual abuse histories. And I can remember these big, brawny guys with big muscles and tattoos getting very upset that somehow their uncle or whoever threatened them could get them. Wow. And I would say, you are in maximum security. You know how you can't get out of here? They can't get in. You know, you're safe here. But you're almost in a hypnotic state, in a trance, when somebody has that kind of power over you. Yeah. And they could still, I could still see that some of them felt like the perpetrator could still get them for telling. Okay? Crazy. I know it's crazy. Right. Yeah. Isn't that, it's, it's just crazy. so... Yeah. It's crazy. It's so ugly. Yeah. Right? That's the thing. Okay. Um... It's tempting to want to express your anger at the person who hurt them and say things like, I'd le like to beat the tar out of this person mm -hmm. who did this to you, hang them up by their toes, report them to the police, slash their tires, you know. Um, and there may be a time for that later. Mm -hmm. But right now, when the person is still trying to work on getting the story out, don't go there. Just listen and be empathic, all right? Um, even if you're ready to scream. Yep. And it is very tempting, and I hear that story often. I let her know how angry I was that this happened to her, okay? Um, there may be a time later. Um, but for right now, you just want to offer them some sympathy and some comfort, all right? Empathy and acceptance is the ticket. Um, never, never, never would we say to write somebody off because they have a, a history of trauma, okay? We don't want to do that. It's never the victim's fault. However, it has to be dealt with if this person is to have normal, healthy relationships. Yeah. Um, they will often tell you that they've learned how to block it out of their head and how to push away the emotions and the feelings and that they choose to deal with it that way and they don't want to talk to anybody and they don't want to go to therapy, which is perfectly understandable. Okay? Um, but it doesn't work over the course of a lifetime because those childhood memories will not be denied forever. And they will start to surface. And one of the ways they surface is in anxiety attacks, nightmares, all kinds of sort of unobtrusive things like that, and you don't know what's going on. But eventually, most people have to talk about it in order to recover. And again, if people aren't ready to talk about it, aren't ready to go to a therapist, the computer has enormous resources on survivals, survival of sexual, for sexual abuse survivors and things that they can do, and even groups and so forth. Okay. So sometimes I think that that's sometimes an easier place to start. Okay, But most people will say, yeah, I can handle it, I can handle it my way, I've learned how to do it, and unfortunately that's not true. Okay, um, And I certainly understand how you don't know what to say when it comes up. But I love your example, Craig. You simply said, do you want to talk about mm -hmm. it? And the guy did. Wow. How's he doing? Um, I think he felt much better after talking about it, and I'm pretty sure I'm I saw sure he did. his name pop up um, for another Skype. Of course, he, of course it did. Um, afterwards, yeah. but, um, you know, it's something that Margaret and I have seen and heard a yes. lot of over the years. Absolutely. Uh, particularly Margaret, you know, she, you know, Margaret's taught me most of the stuff that I know about trauma mm -hmm. over the years because, mm -hmm. I mean, she... That was like really your that specialty. That was my specialty. Yeah. And you learned it well, Craig. Yep. yep. 
Well, you, you wouldn't let me have it any other no, way. No, I wouldn't. I would have given you trouble until you did. And now we're going to force Coach Vicky to learn it. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Because it's there. Yeah. And it gets in many, many relationships way. Okay? Yep. So we don't want to pry, but we don't want to just leave the subject either. Yeah. Okay? You want to find a balance. That's it. Okay. All right. So hopefully you found this one helpful. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can get coaching with us on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coachings. I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you feel like I can be helpful to you, please sign up. And if you've got any issues going on with trauma, I highly recommend you do a coaching with Margaret. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.